Uh, Longridge has been here for a good 70 years, maybe longer. Originally it was where all the people of Marlow learned to swim. It was a beautiful resource for scouts, but they just couldn't afford to retain it. Um, and that's when I became involved and helped set up the charity Longridge on the Thames to open up to everybody. And that's what we've been doing for the last decade. Uh, one of these children, they, they said to me that they didn't feel like they could focus in school, they didn't feel like anyone really had their corner, their teachers couldn't understand them, they weren't really making friends. And spending an hour and a half on the water, they then said to me, you know what, now I can feel like I actually have someone in my corner, you know, you've listened, I'm having fun, and I don't feel the need to play up. Not all those 80,000 young people have a life-changing experience, but a significant number of them do. The charity is set up for people of all backgrounds and all abilities. Quite often, young people with a disability will be joining in with children without a disability without even realising. So kayaking, for example, is a brilliant activity for young people that are on the autistic spectrum because they're in a boat on their own, so they're not worried about being touched and being close to other people, but actually participating in a sport with other young people. Also for young people with physical disabilities, we can, we can happily get somebody in a wheelchair up our climbing wall and have done. We do a lot of very diverse programmes, all designed to allow young people to make positive choices about their lives and not rely on having a label as an excuse not to do positive things. I love this centre. Um, it's beautiful, but most importantly, it is what it gives to young people. The river is a fantastic resource, I mean it's beautiful and we use it uh, for our water activities, but it can, it can flood. Flooding is becoming worse and about five years ago this site flooded to epic levels. And the flooding was bad enough, I mean the buildings were all submerged and underwater, but the flood water stayed and it stayed for weeks. And what that did was it just decimated the entire site. It was touch and go whether Longridge would survive. The buildings haven't really recovered. The site hasn't really recovered. Um, and our residential block now needs to be replaced. The flooding um, from the river, um, it just pulls the plaster off, it pulls all the tiles off the floor. It just seeps into the building. So though we can replaster and we can retile, it's soaked into the actual fabric of the brick. It's there. So there's always that smell. We have done our absolute best for that building to, to keep it going, to keep, to keep it lasting as long as it possibly can. I want to inspire the young people that come here with everything we do, not just the activities. I want them to see what's possible with architecture, what's possible to do with the ecologically sound buildings that are living and breathing and you know, the forefront of new technology for buildings. I want to inspire at every point and our accommodation doesn't inspire in any shape or form. So we'll build a new building that will be flood proof and it'll be flood proof mainly because it'll be raised off the ground. We built a training centre which is basically our shower and toilet block raised off the ground and that was the only building when we flooded that was completely unaffected and that's what we want to do with our residential block is build it raised so the water can come in, stay as long as it likes and then go away again with no damage done. The other week I was stood out here, we had an open day, um, so the family's come down to have a go at an activity and I was talking to a mum who stood on the side and chatting to her about why she was here and she brought her son to us uh, some months ago to do a holiday activity. She said she had to really force him to come down and do it, he wasn't keen, but he'd come down and done the activity and loved it. And the reason she'd forced him, she said, because he had no friends at school, he was very shy, quite academic, not really sporty, and she just felt he was on his own, he was a real loner. And then to do something other people in this sort of environment might inspire him. And he'd come back a few times, he'd even done a course, um, really enjoyed it, she'd started to see him flower and grow as a young person. And the clincher to this, which you know, did bring a tear to mind, said the really great thing about today is he's down here today and he's brought six of his friends with him. That's why I'm here, that's why I do it, and that's why I'm now going to have to try and raise three and a half million pounds to build some new accommodation, because our young people need it.